good to see each of you here this evening. We, of course, are continuing our series. We will soon conclude, in fact, our series on Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit. A subject that I hope that you have and that each of us has gained quite a bit from. It is a beautiful text, a very short one, uh, laying out this fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. As I've said on a number of occasions, both in this series and I'm sure previous to this, these are things that ought to be seen in our lives. These are things that ought to be demonstrated in our lives. When others look at us, they ought to see these things truly as they would recognize other characteristics in our lives. When we consider and we, we start describing each other, I could describe any one of you. And you could describe me. Uh, if, if someone was standing outside the building and they wanted to know who is Robert, and we started to say, well, he's a guy. Okay, so that eliminates some of you. Well, he's, he's got a mustache. Well, that eliminates more. Well, he's, he's wearing a suit. Okay, well, now we're, we're getting there, right? And, and so we, we see these things. We see these descriptions, and, and I can give descriptions on any one of you, and someone could walk in here and identify. Identify who you were based on the description. What about if someone gave this description? In fact, hasn't Paul given this description? As we read here in, in again, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Isn't this, in fact, a description of what one should see in a Christian? What one should see in any one of us? If someone gave this description, how accurate would it be on you or on me? And these are questions that I hope that you are asking yourself and, and striving to, to make certain that it is an accurate description of you. I would ask that you bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we humbly bow before you in prayer. We praise you, exalt you. Father, we thank you for your word that teaches us the way that we should live our lives. We thank you for such beautiful descriptions here and know that we can reach for these attributes, Father, that we can strive to grow in these things. And we pray that we will do so, that we will daily live our lives in a way that will uh, bring glory to you, that will show uh, your greatness, Father, and that we can praise you and exalt you. We pray that you will be with us as we study your word, and that we can grow in knowledge of your will, that we may indeed live by your word, Father. It is in Christ's most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. We are tonight looking at Faith. We've done, we've already looked at love, joy, peace, long suffering, and gentleness as well as goodness. And I hope that you have gotten a, a good understanding of these things. Again, tonight we look at faithfulness. I want to read to you what Strong's has to say on the subject of faith. 4102 is the number, and the word is pistis, which means faith, and I think I used the word faithfulness a moment ago. The American Standard Version actually uses, in this context, uses the word faithfulness, and indeed Strong says that not only can it be faith, but faithfulness, belief, trust, with an implication that, that actions based on on that trust may follow. The faith often refers to the Christian system of belief and lifestyle. So we gain an understanding here, brothers and sisters, of, of what we, we are talking about, the word that we are using, 
And tonight we're going to touch a little bit on that because as I was thinking about these things, about the difference in the two translations, American Standard Version as, as opposed to the King James Version, and, and I got to thinking, well, which makes more sense, to use it as the word faith or faithfulness? And in truth, each one of them, both of them, that is, makes quite a bit of sense in this, as indeed with each of the, the various fruit of the Spirit. We see that faith is produced, or faithfulness is produced by the Spirit through the Word, and seen through our actions. I want us to understand, brothers and sisters, as we have talked about on previous occasions, when we consider the subject of, of faith, we see that it is an active faith that is required. If we are talking about the non-Christian, and we talk about the faith that is required, that faith is still produced through the Word by the Spirit. Not that the Spirit acts independently. Not that the Spirit comes upon the, the, the non-believer and causes him to believe and therefore uh, be converted, but that, that through the Word of God, they are brought to a belief. And any one of us, any person in this world can pick this Word up, read it, come to a knowledge of it, and have faith in God. And it's an act of faith, brothers and sisters. We talked this morning, of course, about, about Christian and what it means to be a Christian. And indeed, it means one has faith. It means one acts upon his faith. And indeed, when we become Christians, when we obey the gospel, as we talked this morning, as we pointed out that one must, in fact, do, we then must be faithful in, in our lives and, and remain so. And that faithfulness again, is produced by the Spirit through the Word. And we see that faithfulness in the actions that we show, the life that we live. Indeed, can we, can we not see in this very text that these things are to be seen in our lives? The fruit of the Spirit is to be seen in our lives, showing forth, indeed, by the way, I need to quit saying indeed, but we, we see that, that, they, that these things are, are shown in our lives. And I want to talk with you a little bit about how our faith or our faithfulness is seen. I want us to see that it is seen through in our attendance. When we consider, and, and, and I did not bring it with me, but I was reading the Gospel Advocate commentary on this, on this text, and they, they were pointing out that, that faithfulness is to be, again, this, this attitude, uh, this through our faithfulness to the church, that is. Our faithfulness is seen in our attendance, brothers and sisters. In Hebrews chapter 10, and verses 23 through 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. <coughs> Excuse me. So we see the the our faithfulness. Our faithfulness is seen in our being here, brothers and sisters. I look around at the ones who are here this evening, and I see in your attendance, I see in your being here, a faithfulness that I don't see in everybody. Now we understand that there are those who are sick, who are shut in, those who who have. Uh, health problems or something arises that causes them, an emergency arises that causes them to not be able to be here, something uh, develops. So we understand that those things happen, but, but brothers and sisters, is it not true that we also see in some, uh, and I'm not talking about just here, I'm talking about in the world, we see that there are some who simply aren't very faithful in their attendance. They're missing 
something. They're missing. And I want you to keep that thought in mind of missing something. So we see, though, our, our faithfulness in our attendance of, of, the, of the worship service. And we support, we are faithful not only to God, but we are faithful to the church, the congregation, in doing so. We see, and our faithfulness can be seen in our worship of the Lord. This morning we came together, and again, here we are this evening, and, and when we come together on, on the first day of the week, there are certain things that we do. We understand that we partake of the Lord's Supper. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, they came together, why? To break bread. They came together for the very purpose of partaking the Lord's Supper. Now, that wasn't the only act, if you will, of worship that they, they performed if if you consider these things, but but they did come together for <coughs> for that purpose. Pardon me, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and use my little mint here that I brought. So we see that that our faithfulness is in the, what we are doing when we partake of the Lord's Supper when we. Consider the reason for it, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20, verses 23 and following. We see that Paul lays out very plainly what the Lord's Supper is for. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Now, stop right here. When we read there, as oft as ye do it. Now, some people take that and they run with it. Every week. I mean, every month, every quarter, every year, every decade, whatever. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, when we read in context there, it becomes very clear that upon the first, <coughs> excuse me, upon the first day of the week, every first day of the week, they took of the Lord's Supper. And that's what we are to do today. So we... We show our faithfulness in partaking of the Lord's Supper. And, and we do so as a memorial remembering what Christ did for us. And of course, looking forward to the promise <coughs> excuse me, that, he, that He has made. Further, we see it in our giving. 1 Corinthians 16 verses 1 and 2. We see our faithfulness when we give back to the Lord as we have been prospered. As we read also in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 9 and following. These are, are verses that we, I know, we know. And when we do these things, we see our faithfulness. We see our faithfulness in our prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. In our preaching, teaching, learning, Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. In our singing, Ephesians 5, 19, Colossians 3, 16. These are areas, brothers and sisters, that we ought to know. That we do, in fact, know. And I know. I know that we do know these things. And we see our, our, our faithfulness can be seen in these actions. Now, let's take it from the other side. Let's think for a moment. What if we aren't doing these things? <coughs> what if we aren't singing? What if we aren't preaching, teaching, learning? What if we aren't doing these Things. What if we are not praying? What if we are not giving as we have been prospered? What if we do not take of the Lord's Supper? Can our faithfulness be seen in those things? Or 
is there a lack of faithfulness that is seen in those things? What about our participation in the work of the church? Now we know there are three areas of the work of the church. Evangelism, as we read in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. Mark 16, verses 15 and 16. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Are we evangelizing? We talked a bit about that this morning, so we'll not belabor the point, but, but are we evangelizing? Can our faithfulness be seen? And we often think of evangelism in the sense of knocking on doors, right? Going out and knocking on a door. But brothers and sisters, and, and I put in the bulletin, I guess it was last week, that it amazes me to see the opportunities. I, I had someone, and I, I'll not identify who this individual was, but I had this individual tell me how that, I'll use the word they in, in this case so as not to identify anybody by any means, but, but they were talking about an incident that they had with someone else. Questions being asked. I don't even think this, this person had, had prompted the discussion. Someone else had and ask them questions. How many times have you had someone ask you questions? How many times have you shared the word with someone else? It doesn't have to be. We often try to categorize evangelism into door knocking or perhaps sitting down and having a Bible study. But can we not understand that evangelism can amount to our answering a question for someone? Maybe they ask a question or are inviting them to come to services or are encouraging them to look at what the Word of God says about what they are thinking, where they are in their lives. Just pointing them to the Lord, trying to bring them to the truth. Sometimes we think, and I pointed this out in, in relation to other areas, sometimes we think that if we can't get all the way we won't even try to get part of the way. Brothers and sisters, I've been watching news recently. Maybe you've seen this, where they've had, I think they've had 11 deaths this year on Mount Everest. A number of deaths. And, and every year I think they have a number of deaths, but I think this year it's a little higher than normal. Now, personally, I find it to be insane to go climb this mountain. I don't care. Uh, some people like to do that, and they want to say they've accomplished that. I got news for you. I don't feel some great accomplishment because I climbed up on some mountain that could kill me. More specifically, the weather, more than anything else, I think. But they showed how that these people, and it stretched like a mile long, these people going up so that they could reach the peak there. And they have this tourist system where they can reach this. They didn't get there in one step. I have yet to meet a person in this world who could go climb Mount Everest in one step. I don't care who he is. We think of Andre the Giant. Some of you will remember it. Maybe all of you will remember it. Andre the Giant, big man. Think of Goliath. Goliath was a big man, wasn't he? I can guarantee you, neither one of them could have reached it in one step. And we as Christians are not going to get all the way in one step. But we can take a step. I may not be able to sit down and study in a, in a formal Bible study with someone, but I can. I can mention God. I can have God in the subject of my conversation. I can make certain that I am living my life and setting forth that example that may bring someone to the point where they may decide to do a Bible study. Evangelism is a, is, is a wide, encompassing subject, and it is something we ought to be committing in our lives, doing in our lives. Benevolence, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. We see that Paul here lays out very plainly that we are to be benevolent. 
As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Doing good to others. Are we doing so? Are we being faithful to, to be benevolent to others, to help others? Now we need to be wise about these things. We know that there are those who, who are running a racket, if you will. Out to get what they can give. And we can't just give to everybody indiscriminately, no viewing the point that, well, somebody asked me, so I'll just give. Because we'll be broke pretty soon and have nothing. Because we know there are those who are just asking because they want to get what they can give. Edification, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. We looked, of course, at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Notice specifically verse 24. And, and we've noticed this text before, how that we are told in Hebrews 10 and verse 24, And let us consider one another to provoke to, unto love and to good works. Edification, brothers and sisters. That's what, it's hard to say Paul, but there's what the Hebrews writer is pointing to. Edification, building one another up, encouraging one another to do those things that are needful. Now, let's go back to the negative side again. And ask this question. Can people see these things in our lives? Do they see the faithfulness in our lives through these actions? Because these are things that are tangible, things that we can see. Now we understand, now we don't go out and do our alms to be seen of men, but brothers and sisters, can we not see that we can be seen in our actions, in things we do? Now I can see to you that you don't always see what I do. I don't always see what you do. I can't see every conversation when we talk about evangelism. I can't see every conversation that you have with someone. I can't see every act of benevolence that you commit, that you do. I don't see everything that you do to edify, to build one another up. But the truth is, so often when we aren't doing these things, we can see, can't we? God can see for certain. We see in these things our faithfulness. Stories told, and I'll probably mess this up. I, I'm, I'll just tell it how I, I'm going to tell it. And if I get a little off, then the message will still be the same. There was a man who, who was carrying his cross. We talked, of course, this morning about how that we are to, to take up our cross daily. Right? Isn't that, that how we are told in, in the Word of God that we are to take up our cross daily? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24 we noted this morning. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The story is told that there was a man who, who was doing just that. He was carrying his cross and he came across this man, the devil in fact. The devil and the man was just carrying this cross and it was so heavy. And the devil said, you know, you can lighten your load a little bit. Why don't you just trim a little bit off there at the end? Nobody will notice. It, it won't make a difference and it'll, it'll lighten your load a little bit. So surely, <clears throat> the man did. The devil provided him a saw and he sawed a little bit off. And just as the devil had said, his cross was a little lighter. And he went on and it was a little easier to bear, a little easier to carry. And then he comes to the end of his life and I'm going to use a little poetic license here. He comes to his, the end of his life and here's this great gulf that he must cross death into, into eternity and into heaven. And God tells him, lay down your cross. And 
cross as, with the, as a bridge. So he lays down his cross, and it was just that short, because he shaved off just that much, and he wouldn't get him across. Brothers and sisters, I, I heard that story somewhere before, and as I said, I, I'm probably uh, changing it a little bit, but the basic concept is there. What are we doing? Are we shaving off a little bit of our cross that's a little too heavy for us to bear? Are we, are we perhaps shaving off in our attendance? Are we shaving off maybe a little bit with our participation in worship service? Are we shaving off? Maybe, maybe we just don't sing today. Now sometimes I admit, I, I confess to you that today I haven't sung out like I do, like I try to do normally, because I've been my voice still isn't 100 percent and I've been trying to sing silently in some cases or softly, not as loud. But are we shaving off? In those areas, are we shaving off in our giving, in our praying, in our whatever? Are we shaving off in our evangelism, in our benevolence, in our edification of our brother? Or maybe in some other area that we haven't mentioned today. Have we cut off a little bit of our cross? Maybe we've cut off more than one piece. And we're, we're trimming it down so it's a little lighter to bear. There are too many in this world who we talked again of this morning about being a Christian and what that means. There are too many in the world today, in the religious world, who profess to be Christians who have shaved off huge chunks of their cross. What about us? Have we done so? Have we cut off some of the cross that we are to bear? Brothers and sisters, I realize the Bible doesn't describe that event where we pass from this life and we go on to either to paradise or torment, ultimately to heaven or to hell, in, in the way that I describe, but do we not see that when we start trimming off the things we're supposed to do, when we start cutting corners, in, in our walk with Christ, that we're going to find ourselves a little short. We're going to miss out on, on heaven. Now someone will object and say, but see, Robert, that's what the blood of Christ is for. Because not one of us is ever going to truly be good enough to do it ourselves. And, and to that I say amen. Not one of us will ever be good enough. But brothers and sisters, when we start trimming the corner, when we start deliberately ignoring what God's Word says, when we start deliberately failing to be faithful, then we are counting Christ's blood as nothing. And we're going to find that His blood, not that His blood is insufficient, his blood won't wash those sins or what? Because we have deliberately been disobedient to Him. We are to have this fruit of the Spirit along with the rest. Faith or faithfulness. We are to be faithful in our, our walk with, with God. Are we being faithful? Can we see that in ourselves? Can others see it in us? Because if we can't, if they can't, then we need to make a change. You're here tonight. And you answer that question. That they can't see your faithfulness. Then I, I, I implore you, I, I beg you to think about what you need to do. Make a change. Go to the Father. Ask His forgiveness. If you need to come before your brother and, 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 and ask for your brothers and sisters to pray with you, pray for you, do so. We'll be glad to do so. And He's promised that if we're faithful to confess our faults, He's faithful to forgive us. Or maybe you're here and you are not a Christian. Maybe you've never obeyed the gospel. Then you need to obey that precious word 
that precious gospel that promises, that, that is a promise to us that we can have eternal life. A promise to you that you can have eternal life. You must hear the word, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, repent of your sins, confess Him to be the Son of God, and be baptized, immersed in water for the remission of your sins. All things are ready. And if you're here and you have need, we encourage you, we plead with you, come while we stand and while we sing. Are you weary? Are you heavy? Are you heavy?